Hello and welcome to this episode of Trash to Track. In this episode we're going to be looking at this British Railways Blue King locomotive that's been sent to me for repair by my friend Lorna. Immediately apparent is that the clips have broken off the tender and there are two tender weights missing. Um, this loco is permanently coupled to its tender so we're going to have to undo that drawbar. The loco body shell seems to be covered in some sort of yellow dust so I'm going to have to have a look at this later on. And doing the battery test on the test track the loco was showing no signs of life. Um, the motor wasn't even buzzing so uh, we're going to have to strip this down and have a look at what's going on. Now as I said the tender drawbar is a permanent feature so we have to undo these two screws. The screw in the um, boiler section uh, protrudes quite a long way out from the bottom. But you can see there there's just like a spring piece of metal that provides electrical conductivity between the two screws. Once that's released and that also um, provides uh, security for the body shell at one end that screw. Um, once that's released we can work on the tender. So I'm going to release the other screw to remove that tender drawbar. We are going to have to try and straighten that out as it is quite badly bent. So I'll leave those two together and put them in the magnetic tray. To remove the motor you simply remove two screws and the motor comes out along with this weird set of floating axles um, that sit as the centre wheels of the tender there. The rear coupling hook was also badly bent so I straightened this out with my needle nose pliers. And once it was nice and uh, straight this was set aside and we'll have a look at the motor. Now it's interesting to note the wheels on this model have got holes for crank pins so they're obviously used for other Lima models. And overall it doesn't look too dirty it just looks like it could do with a service. So to access the commutator you have to remove these two screws. So I'm going to remove both of those and remove the motor faceplate which also releases the brushes and springs. And as you can see there the commutator is extremely dirty. It looks like an oily residue um, on there and it looks like some lubrication may have found its way into the armature at some point. So cleaning this off with a cotton bud and methylated spirits I then polished the brass parts up with my fiberglass pencil. To remove any of the corrosion and any of the burdened on carbon from the brushes. That commutator faceplate is already looking a million times better than it did. I'm also going to clean the motor faceplate. There was quite a lot of carbon build up and old grease in this. So I'm not surprised really that this loco had stopped working. The dirt on it was just incredible. It was so dirty that I'm going to have to put the brushes and springs and the metal washer off the motor into this small tub and then I'm going to soak them liberally with WD-40 contact cleaner and then set it aside for a couple of hours with the lid on just so that that soaks in and cleans the brushes. Lima armatures um, and commutators sorry, don't have the deep grooves that other models do so it was just a quick um, clean out there with a toothpick. I left the gears in situ and just give them a wipe over with a cotton bud and methylated spirits. And a couple of hours later I fish out all the metal parts from that contact cleaner. And as you'll see that contact cleaner was quite dirty. So I just put them in this paper towel and dabbed the excess off. And I'm pleased to see that all that muck has come off there. Now this washer goes on that motor shaft. And then the motor faceplate can go back on. And this is uh, re-secured with the two screws we took off earlier. The brushes, as you can see, there's very little coming off these now. They've been cleaned in that contact cleaner. So these were put back into their holders, and then the springs were separated, and these were replaced. The nice thing about Lima brushes is they do have quite a large uh, nodule on the top for the springs to sit over them and hold them in place. Once they were replaced, I uh, carefully bent the brass holder into place to hold them securely. And the other brush and spring were put in in the same way. And then we're going to give a battery test to the motor. And I'll just turn it around there. And then with the battery you can see the motor is spinning away lovely there. So that was a case of all that old oily grease had built up on the commutator preventing it from running. There's a couple of pickups here that need to be cleaned. So I've just gently uh, removed them from behind the wheel. And I'm going to give them a polish up 
with the fiberglass pencil. And then when I replace them behind the wheels, I'm going to make sure that they are making proper contact with the wheel backs. I think this model may have seen a lot of use in the past, hence the build-up of dirt. The tender chassis frame was just given a dusting over with an old paintbrush. And to be quite fair, for its age, it's not a bad casting, to be honest. Um, this one on this model is a metal casting, and there's quite a lot of detail cast into the side. These floating dummy axles here I gave a clean up as there was quite a bit of black um, black dirt build up from where it's been running on a layout. It's imperative that when you service these models that you clean all the dirt off otherwise it will just transfer it back onto your model railway layout when you're running them. The motor was then replaced into the tender, uh, tender frame there and the two securing screws from underneath are replaced to hold it in place. I'm just making sure there that everything is correctly aligned. Now once the screws are in place holding the motor into the chassis frame, I connect a couple of wires from a power controller to get the wheels spinning and then I'm going to polish up the driving wheels. First I polish them with my fiberglass pencil because there was quite a build up of dirt on these. And I also polish the wheel backs and then I follow up with a final polish uh, with a cotton bud and methylated spirits as I usually do. The wheels there, you can actually see the shine on those wheels through the camera. That's how clean they've come up. So now that all the wheels on the tender have been cleaned, you can see there just how much dirt came off them. I'm going to have a look at this tender drawbar and I'm going to straighten this using my needle nose pliers. Just putting it in the um, teeth of the pliers there, I just gently use finger pressure to straighten it back out. That's the problem with these permanently coupled locos. By lifting them up by either the tender or the loco, you do run the risk of bending these permanently fixed tender drawbars. So I've screwed that back in there now. You don't screw that screw all the way in, otherwise it prevents the tender drawbar from turning. And to remove the body shell off the loco section, there's a screw at the back, which we've already taken out. And there's a screw under the smoke box, which Lima very handily cast a hole in the front pony truck there to allow you to get your screwdriver through it to undo the screw. Once that's undone, you can see the um, detail part there in the cylinders and a rather crude pickup method for the driving wheels. Again, this looks like it's um, just general dirt in here. The pickup on the front there wasn't even in line with the wheel. So using my fiberglass pencil again and turning the wheels with finger pressure, I'm going to polish up these dry, um, loco wheels and give them a nice shine back to ensure good electrical conductivity. And I'm also going to polish up these brass pickups because there was quite a lot of dirt and fluff that had gathered by the rotation of the wheels over the years. Once everything was cleaned up on the front of the loco here and uh, all the fibres had been brushed away, I actually take off the base keeper plate for the wheels because some Lima models have a weight in the plastic chassis and these weights are prone to Mazak rot. They can expand and prevent the train from running. Now I've taken this off and it becomes apparent that there's quite a lot of that yellow dust in here. So I'm worried that the weight might have started to corrode. However, pulling it out, I can't see any cracks on it, just a bit of surface corrosion. So I'm going to sand that off and clean that all up. And then I'm going to also remove any of the leftover dust from the chassis. This dust, if it gets on your layout, will be horrendous. It will get in everything and it will just cause a big headache. So you can see me here, I can actually scrape off this I don't know what what it's called, metal dust off the side of this weight. And here I am just dusting out the rest of it from that chassis. Now that I've tidied the weight up, and I've confirmed that there's not actual any signs of it expanding at the moment, I'm going to refit it into the chassis there, when I get it the correct way around, that is. Replace the axles into the axle holders, and then just give them a slight bit of lubrication. 
as these axles have no bearings on and they actually sit on the plastic as it rotates. So just a small amount of oil on each of those axles will hopefully give it a bit of lubrication to ease running when it's back on a layout. The front pony truck clips in on that little sprue there and then the base keeper plate is replaced and the two screws are tightened up. Do not over tighten your screws as I've said many a time in these videos as you can end up de-threading them and ruining the model. One thing to note about Lima models is all the screws seem to be flat headed which is the polar opposite of all the other models you work on. Now I did try and clean this up with a cotton bud and some warm soapy water but it became apparent that the dust and muck on the front of the loco there warranted a deeper clean so I actually gave it a rub over with the toothbrush and some hot soapy water and after that was done you can see that there's a shine being brought back to this boiler section and it actually looks quite nice. To replace the body shell on the chassis you just engage it into the clips and then replace the front screw that goes through that pony truck first as the rear securing screw is the one that holds the tender drawbar in place. Now that the loco is in its um, cradle with the body shell on it's easier to polish the wheels up so I stopped doing it earlier as they wouldn't rotate properly but you can see here I'm just cleaning them again just to make sure I've done a thorough job. I obviously hadn't done it right earlier judging by the amount of dirt that was coming off the model. But you can see there just how nice and shiny I got those wheels. I'm going to add a small amount of oil to the linkages and the motion. Again, this just provides a bit of lubrication so that the model can run uh, nice and smoothly. And then once that's done, I'm going to reattach the low coat to the tender. Just making sure it's all nice and free running there, which it is. So it's back into the loco cradle. I'm going to line up this brass um, pickup part here with the tender drawbar and then replace this rather large screw that, in my opinion, didn't really need to protrude out as much as it did. It does look a bit odd. And uh, oh, I dropped my screwdriver there. But it does look a bit odd sticking out that far. And I did have to check back through the footage to make sure I'd got the screws in the correct way around. But that is indeed how they're supposed to be. I'm just making sure there that it is tight but you can see it does protrude quite a long way now to fix the tender body onto the chassis i'm going to use my usual method of satin varnish and once that's dry it's onto the bench to be tested and you can see now that this lima king all it needed was a good service to remove that horrible oily mess off the commutator that was preventing the model from running for its age it's not a badly detailed model it's ideal for the starter or a budget train set but it has been surpassed in recent years by Hornby's older King and then their newer super detailed version. If you've got an engine you'd like to see featured on an episode of Trash to Track, please email me at the email address on screen and we'll have a look at getting it sent over and it may even feature in an episode all of its own. In next week's episode, I take a look at a locomotive that hasn't turned a wheel under its own power for the best part of 40 years. And the restoration was actually almost a year in the making, so stay tuned for that. Having the King run round with these four Mark 1s proves that the lack of tender weights doesn't, uh, doesn't appear to affect its haulage capacity too much. Thanks for watching Trash to Track. Please like, share and subscribe and I'll catch you again in the next video. Bye for now.